everybody, this is Coach Steve with Soul Runners, MarathonTraining.tv and SoCalRunning.com. I'm going to teach you the Chi Running Body Looseners and some dynamic warm-up exercises that I was trained from some exercise physiologists and some sports doctors. So we're going to go through them all right now. The first one, everybody, is shaking out your ankles. So you want your ankles really loose when you do this. If you, you know, I almost have to pick up my foot and shake it so it's this loose. If you need to hold on to something, but that's how loose it is. And it's hard to get your ankles loose. It's hard to feel that looseness in your ankles. So you just shake out both sides for a second. The second one is engage the pelvic floor and kind of find your C shape. Balance one-legged posture stance on one foot. Line up the knees and come onto the back toe. Okay, right here, nice and tall, engage, and make circles with the knees like you have uh, almost like, uh, like a, a pendulum on your knees that's making the circle and just let the ankle go for the ride so you can feel how loose that ankle gets. This is another way to find that loose ankle. After about seven, eight, nine, or 10, switch directions. Stay engaged in the core, stay tall. Good, switch sides. Line the knees up, toes back. And then switch directions. Good. Next, put the feet together. Bend the knees. Take your hands right above the kneecaps. Now take your shoulders up to your ears. Pull them all the way down. Lengthen the back of the neck. Now just make nice slow circles with your knees. Remember, this comes from Tai Chi. They don't do anything in Tai Chi fast when they're warming up. Now what if you engage your core a little bit here? This has really been an important one for me. Now switch directions. This really has helped me with IT band issues and it's helped my knees because I have kind of creaky knees. Are your quads supposed to be really sore? I mean, it hurts right here. They're not supposed to be really sore, no. Okay, come on up. Now, take your feet a little wider than hip width apart. And what we're going to do, in the book, Danny shows you doing it both legs at, at the same time. I'm going to show you one leg to make it easier. What I want you to do with one knee, keeping the foot flat on the ground, just make a circle. This is actually moving the, um, the, the femur head in the hip socket, mostly. Switch directions. And now the other side. Switch sides. Stay engaged in the core. And switch directions. You'll notice one side might feel like an octagon <laughs> and the other side might, the other direction might feel nice and circular. If you want to do both at the same time, take one knee forward and one knee back. Now bring them both together, take the other knee forward and the other knee back and take them apart. So it's kind of like an egg beater. They're both going the same direction, they're just almost opposite. Now try not to move the body too much as you do this. Danny said he had to do this 2,000 times a day in his Tai Chi class. That's 2,000 said it helped his bow leggedness so I played water polo it's easy for me okay next one is put your hands on your shoulders we call these hula hoops in the book they're called pelvic circles and what you want to do is you want to just move the hips so it's like you have that anterior pelvic tilt push back sorry posterior pelvic tilt push back anterior pelvic tilt and so you're also moving the pelvis as you do this. Now I keep my hands up here to keep the shoulders from moving, so I really concentrate on just moving the pelvis, okay, or the hips. Switch directions, hula hoops. I'm still playing with that hula hoop, trying to learn how to do it. Okay, next, shake the legs out for a second. Come back into the core, and with a flat back, come down to a half stretch. Lengthen that neck out. So you're looking straight down at the ground. Send the tailbone out. This is called bi-directional movement. We're moving out both directions. Right here, take the shoulders away from the ears. Breathe here. I even add a little, um, a little flexion and extension in my low back. So like that cat-cow move in yoga. So I actually concave my low back, round it, concave and round it, concave and round it. Now right here, inhale, exhale, bend the knees and let the body just hang over to the ground. So bend the knees and now chin to chest. Keep your chin to your chest. Come up one vertebrae at a time. Let the arms dangle chin to chest like you're stacking the vertebrae right on top of each other. Come all the way up. Head comes up last and I even arch back. Just feel it. We do this one twice. Come back down. Breathe. Maybe out a little in that low back. A little cat-cow. 
You need to slow it down a little. There we go. Inhale, exhale, fold. Now come up one vertebrae at a time. Just a little quicker than last time, but not too quick. Okay, next. Almost everybody's favorite. You need a little bit of room so you don't hit arms with people. Put one foot in front of the other. Find your C shape. I want just a little more than a foot length. Okay? From here, this is the hard part of this one, is that you need to rotate the hips. So that hip needs to rotate back. From right here, let your arms just be floppy. Now what you need to do is snap your hips. Just practice. Snap your hips. And then this time let the arms go. Snap and let the arms go. Snap back and let the arms go. Snap. 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 Arms should be loosey-goosey. You've seen this one in Tai Chi. Nice, Pam. Switch sides. Snap. So the arms are just a second behind the hip snapping. And this is a difficult one to do. How many of you guys have weight on your front foot? Keep that weight on the front foot like we do she running. Good. Now step the other foot back. Take your hands to your shoulders. And these are called Shakiras. So for Shakiras, what we're going to practice is that pelvic rotation. Just let that hip draw back. Don't let it swing out. Swing it back, back, back. Notice that my shoulders aren't moving. So I'm trying to get my, my body used to letting the pelvis rotate without swinging my shoulders. Patty, not up, but back. Remember, like there you go. Pull it back. Don't let it go up. Just straight back, straight back. And if you do it, you'll start noticing the lines in the shirt. There you go. Switch sides. So we call them Shakira's because you can go faster. And one day, I'll be with Shakira dancing. Dun, 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 Okay. The last chi running uh, exercise or body loosener is feet together, hands behind your head like you've just been busted. Okay? <laughs> I want you to imagine you have two headlights on your hip that are pointing out this way. Don't let your hips rotate as you do this. Take an elbow up and then twist from the torso, keeping the hips straight, and then look back for your heels, pushing the elbow up in the air. Now, this is my favorite one because I get a huge stretch all the way from the top of the hip, all the way up, stretches out the intercostals, which helps me breathe, all the way up the entire length of the body. Breathing here and switch. Keep those hips straight. Good. Come back to center. Now here's three that aren't in the book. These are my dynamic warm-up exercises that I've worked with exercise physiologists and uh, sports doctors to help just get the body really ready for movement. So the body looseners actually move the, the joints and so we create that synovial fluid moving within the joints. We get everything ready to move. Now what we want to do is warm up the muscles. So the first thing, find your C-shape. Pick up a heel, just like we do in chi running, let the toes hang down. Now all I want you to do is push the leg back and then let it swing in. Push it back, let it swing in. Back, back. And I even use my arms. Back, back, back. Four, three, two, one. Put that foot down. So I do ten on each side. So we're just practicing getting these, this foot moving back. Back, back, back. Back, 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 three, two, one, both feet down. Now, when you're doing that, what I want you to think about is I want you to think, was your balance coming from your core or was it coming from your foot on the ground? Were you sitting here gripping really tight with this foot or were you trying to let the core create your balance as you move this back? Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is to protect the knees, we're only going to go as far as a half squat. Feet shoulder width apart, come down. I want your toes pointed straight for this one, maybe just out just a little bit if you need to, and come down so you have a 90 degree angle between the knees and the, the knee joint. And try not to, you do not let your knees get in front of your toes. Take your arms out. From right here, we're going to come up three inches. As you come up three inches, engage those glutes. Squeeze those glutes. Squeeze, let go. 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 Squeeze, 
let go, three, two, one, all the way up. So what this does is it actually turns the glutes on. The glutes are some of the most important running muscles, gets them firing. A lot of times they go out cold, they're not turned on, and so the muscle spindles don't all fire. You've got to get those glutes turned on. All these help the glutes. This is a great one to help people that have IT band issues and warm up that entire side of the leg. This is a balanced one and you may fall. I'm going to show you both ways. The first is put one foot behind the other, find your C-shape. Now this is about bending the knee, not bending at the waist. So what we're going to do is the foot that's back, take that opposite hand up in the air, and now you're going to bend the knee, you're going to come in, you're going to reach to the inside of the foot. Now don't just lift the upper body, come up with the leg. Come up over the toe, lift up. Come across, lift up. Come back, lift up. Come over, lift up. Come across, lift up. We'll do one more set. Back, up, in front, up, across, up. Anyone not feeling that in the legs? You feel it back there. Glutes, hamstrings, IT band area, outside, lateral, um, lateral quadricep. Vastus lateralis. From here, I want you to do the advanced way is to try to balance and do it. Up, up, up. Let's switch feet now. My, uh, keeping a foot on the ground doesn't take anything away from it. But if you want to add that balance component, you can add that balance component. But the balance, if you do the balance one, come from the core, not from gripping your foot. Okay. Down, over the toe, across down, over the toe, across, let the knee do the work, just don't let it go over the toe, and across, and up. Now let's just do one balancing, down, over, in the core, and up. The very last one <laughs> is going to open up the, uh, the hip flexors. So come into a long lunge. We're going to use our arm as a driver to create extra extension, which is going to create extra length in these hip flexors, quadriceps, and um, psoas muscles. So here's what we want to do. Level the pelvis, stay engaged. Keep the knee in line with the ankles. Just let the back knee come down towards the ground. Don't touch the ground and raise the arm at the same time. As you raise it back, do you feel the bigger stretch? Okay, come up. Bring the arm down. Ready? Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. Step up, switch sides. Ready? As this knee comes down, the arm goes up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And step up. If you take the extra five, six, seven minutes to do this before, and some of you might notice you already, you, it raises your heart rate too. So you're, uh, you're getting a little bit of everything before you go out to your run. Now your muscles are ready for movement. So especially first thing early in the morning, this is great to do, but it also stretches and turns on all the muscles. So there's your body listeners and dynamic exercises. Have a great run. See you later.